Masters of the Air tells the true story of the 100th Bomb Group flying their B-17 Flying Fortresses during World War II. It is a follow-up to one of my all-time favourite TV shows, Band of Brothers. Nine episodes will be available on Apple TV starting January 26, 2024 with parts 1 and 2, continuing weekly until the conclusion with part 9 on March 15. Episode 1 begins with Major Gail Buck Clevin and John Bucky Egan about to head to England to commence combat missions in the European theatre. Buck's first mission is to bring his plane and crew to England via Greenland to join the war effort. Here we are introduced to members of his 350th squadron. I will say that Band of Brothers does a better job of introducing its main characters. The paratrooper training at Camp Dakoa allowed us to get to know the men better. Being able to identify them by body type, hair colour, facial features, etc. Masters of the Air has everyone rugged up in thick sheepskin bomber jackets and wearing hats and helmets for most of its opening. Maybe the easy ID will come with future episodes, but right now, after one episode, it is difficult to tell the men apart. So at this point, I'm familiar with Buck, Bucky and Croz, the narrator and navigation officer who can't keep his lunch down. As far as I can tell, there's 11 men per plane. So I have a long way to go before I recognize all the crew. I believe there's a pilot, a co-pilot, a navigation officer, a radio officer, an engineer, a bombardier, a tail gunner, a ball gunner, and a pair of waste gunners. I also had to put subtitles on as the voices got lost in the mix a lot of the time. I know, I can talk right. Bucky is the company air exec and seems to be a bit of a loose cannon. He broke a narwhal tooth in a bar in Greenland, Bet that a man with Down syndrome can hit an apple on his head with a dart, and his CO doesn't like the way he runs his company. That bit with the darts and the winning bikes? Did anyone catch what Bucky's wager was? All I heard was he gets two bikes if he wins. Then we cut to him smooching some bird for 10 seconds, and next thing he's riding a bike in the rain singing poorly. That was a strange editing choice. So Croz is so distracted from his air sickness that he accidentally sends his plane over France before the pilot can steer back on course for England. It's a nice little peek into the life of a World War II bomber crew's life. I didn't know where the limit was before he needed a mask. Now I know it's 10,000 feet. The sets and costumes both look great. I love the interior shots within the bombers as there is so much detail and it really shows how uncomfortable those planes were. They were basically a flying tin can. The effects work is also very good. During the emergency landing, it almost looked real and allowed you to share the uncertainty that the crew experienced as the plane belly flopped into the grassy field with sod flying everywhere. This added to the tension as the crew had to immediately evacuate in case of an explosion or fire. One thing the show seems to be missing is any kind of voiceover to explain why certain Air Force operating procedures are bad news. For example, in their first combat mission, they are told that they will be in the low, low or tail end Charlie position. I have no idea what that is and why it's bad. I can guess that low means you're close to the ground for flak fire and tail end means that there's no one watching your back, but I don't know if that's correct. I like the element of superstition among the crew. So far, we've had someone spilling the salt and throwing the salt over their shoulder and the lucky juice. What is that? A $2 bill? They even had a guy saying prayers. How quaint. Watching the startup sequence for these old planes was also fascinating. I wonder how different they are from modern planes. Flying through the flak fire was pretty daunting. It makes me wonder how these guys managed to keep their composure. I would be filling my pants almost immediately. You really are just putting yourself in fate's hands. So the Yanks started the war doing daylight bombing runs to improve their accuracy and minimize wastage of ordnance. But this seems to come at the expense of being visible to the enemy and also vulnerable to cloud cover blocking your view of the target. I do have to mention how difficult it is to work out whose plane is whose at this point. In fairness, we don't know who these people are yet, so it's hard to form any kind of attachment to them. But it would be nice to have something, maybe a color associated with each plane. I know, it's the Air Force, but it would improve the viewing experience. I mean, who even is Schmellenbach? There is some gore in the first episode, which came as a bit of a shock. One of the pilots gets his lower face shredded. I had to rewind to check out the damage. Pretty nice makeup job, folks. 
At one point, one of the gunner's weapons jams, and he has to take off his gloves to clear the jam. While pushing down the weapon, he starts complaining and pulls his hands away, and they're all messed up. I assumed that it was because the gunner got hot from firing it, but it turns out that at that altitude, the air temperature is 50 degrees below zero. So his gun froze to his flesh. Gross. That's minus 45 Celsius. I also didn't know that they dropped their unused bombs in the channel. I guess it makes sense to do that instead of risking a landing with a fully loaded bomber. If you crash, you'll destroy the entire airfield. Episode 1 ends with a melancholy return to base as Buck expresses to Bucky how he wished he'd prepared him for what it's really like flying in combat. The American bravado is gone, replaced with a feeling of despair. First episodes are always hard to score, as they spend the bulk of their time setting up the scenario and the characters but I feel Master of Air Part 1 does a great job of setting up the situation. For that reason, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. We know the situation now. The Americans are coming into this battle thinking it will be like their training runs, only to suffer a demoralizing defeat on their first mission. The sets and costumes are perfect and combine well with the visual effects to feel almost like a documentary. The sound effects enhance the visual greatly with booming explosions and subtle accents such as equipment rattling and engines humming. The music is good, raising spirits in moments of triumph and lowering the mood in times of despair. However, there were times that it drowned out the dialogue. I would like a little more exposition about what certain Air Force procedures mean from a layman's perspective to allow me to share their sense of dread. I'd also like a little more time to get to know the characters before we start killing them off so I can share the emotions of the remaining crew. If we can iron out a few of these kinks, I feel like we'll have a series that can sit on the shelf alongside Band of Brothers and the Pacific. This is why I'm glad they released two episodes in the first week so I can go straight into... Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time and have a good one.